We study cultures. It's in our name, after all. We study work cultures, food cultures, subcultures, consumer cultures, maybe even culture wars. However, when we talk of East Asian cultures, few people probably think of bacteria and other microbial cultures. That is about to change. Every one of us consists of as many bacteria cells as human cells. In our gut, in our mouth, on our skin. We inhale and digest bacteria, and we excrete bacteria every day. Bacteria are part of us, and that makes us part of the soil, the plants, the fungi, the air around us. We shake hands, and by that we exchange parts of ourselves. The bacteria connect us, and blur the boundaries between us and our environment. Without our bacteria, we would grow weak, depressed, mad. Malnourished, sick. Without them, we would die. But bacteria also kill, devour live and dead flesh. Like the Japanese deity siblings Izanami and Izanagi, they are simultaneously the bringers of life and the destroyers of the living. Our forefathers learned processes to avoid harmful bacteria and invite the good guys to be part of our bodies. Those processes and techniques are called fermentation. Controlled fermentation is one of the oldest methods for preserving food around the world. Most famous in the West is the production of yogurts, kefir, cheeses, sourdoughs, and of course alcoholic beverages. However, in the last couple of decades, more and more attention has been given to the extraordinary probiotic and prebiotic qualities of fermented vegetables. Many of the most famous and innovative restaurants in the world have thus made their fermented products the centerpieces of their brands. Yet nothing defies globalization as much as fermented foods. True, we all know kimchi and miso, which have become staple household items for many people across the world. But every batch is different. The unique mixtures of airborne mold spores, local variants of bacteria on the hands and utensils of the chef. And the peculiar composition of the gut biota of the consumer that responds to the fermented product in specific ways cannot be replicated by large corporations and the food industry. In East Asia and in many other parts of the world, fermented foods are not only essential elements in people's daily diets, but also sources of local and national pride and identities. With this project, the East Asian Studies Center seeks to explore the roots and multitudes of traditional East Asian fermentation practices and techniques, and present this microscopic world to the general public. We hope that this will stimulate broader interest in East Asian food cultures and history, but also that local farmers, restaurants, and other food producers in our region will find inspiration to explore new ways to preserve. Refine and market their produce. With the fermentation project, we plan on accomplishing a long range of objectives that fit well with the mission of EASC. So I hope you will join us in exploring the worlds of miso, shoyu, and kimchi.